Okay, we are recording. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Um, I've been having some, I wouldn't say Zoom troubles, but I up updated my my operating system on my laptop yesterday or the day before, and I've been having some weird issues with it. So Zoom is currently a bit delayed. I'm not sure if that's due to the upgrade or if Zoom is just weird. So I do hope this all goes well today. Um, welcome to everybody who's here. Welcome to some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, so while you are getting yourself all set up, if you would like to code along with me today, we only need the create block theme plugin. We're only going to be using that today. Um, I am going to be running the session using WordPress 6.1 because that was released on Tuesday on the 1st of November, but it shouldn't matter. You should be able to do this in WordPress 6.0 um because we're not going to be doing anything that requires any new functionality today um and if you'd like to please let us know in the chat where you're joining us from uh, while you're doing that i'll introduce myself my name is jonathan i am from cape town in south africa it's finally starting to get into summer weather here now november is the sort of start of our sort of warm summer weather so I am able to, to wear t-shirts and shorts again to work, which is lovely. Uh, but yesterday we had a thunderstorm and it rained the whole day. <laughs> so it's just one of those weird times of the year. Um, I am an ex-developer. I used to write code for a living. And now I hopefully teach other people how to write code for a living. Um, and I'm a sponsored contributor at Automatic. I'm sponsored to work with the training team. We are the group of people who create these workshops and the tutorials on Learn WordPress and the lesson plans and everything around the Learn WordPress platform. And if you want to find me on Twitter, I am John underscore Bossinger, um, because when I signed up for Twitter, it didn't allow lots of characters in your handle and my full name was not possible. So I had to go with John, because it was either John Bossinger or Jonathan Boss. And I just thought Jonathan Boss sounded way too pretentious. Um, so most people in the WordPress space just know me as John, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> No voice. Um, everybody else seems to be able to hear me, Yawed, so it might just be a volume thing on your side. Uh, can every, anybody else, is anybody else having volume, uh, sorry, sound issues? Can everybody hear me? Um, Adrian can hear me. I know Catherine can hear me because we spoke before we started. Okay, Yawed's good to go. As I say, Zoom has been doing weird things to me today, so it might be my Zoom instance, I don't know. Um, but I'm glad it's working for you now. Okay. Um, right, so today we're going to be talking about internationalization in block themes. Um, and for the eagle eyed among you, you will see that I've spelt internationalization in the UK English version because I'm South African and that's the English that we've learned. So, all my UK friends are probably quite happy, and possibly my Canadian friends. I'm not sure if Canada or Canada uses the American spelling or not. Um, but if you're from America, you're probably used to a Z there. Uh, I have been writing in UK English for my entire life. So when I started writing content for American publications, changing that S to a Z grates me <laughs> greatly. A <laughs> um, few announcements before we get started. First of all, welcome everybody. And again, thank you, Catherine, for co-hosting today. Catherine is effectively becoming my regular co-host and I have no problem with that. Uh, Catherine was very kind to, to offer to co-host the very last minute this week. I did have Sarah who was going to co-host with me. But unfortunately, she had to step out at the last minute due to some personal things. So Catherine is kind enough to step in and, and join us today. So thank you again, Catherine, for joining us. Uh, as always, we're presenting in focus mode, but please do consider enabling your video so that I can see your lovely faces. If you would like to, you don't have to, but you're welcome to enable your video. And then Catherine and I will be able to at least see you. Um, you are, as always, welcome to ask questions. Uh, you're welcome to either ask them in the chat or unmute to ask them. The only uh, thing that I do ask is if the question is not specifically related to what we're doing on screen, please keep it to one of those gaps where I grab a sip of coffee in between and then pop your questions through then. Um, if, you, if you would like to do it verbally, you're welcome to use the raise hand icon in Zoom, or just if you've got your video on, just raise your hand as well. I'm sure Catherine will be keeping an eye out for those, uh, but you are welcome to ask questions or answer other people's questions. This is very much a let's learn together situation. Um, as we discovered in previous workshops, I don't know everything. <laughs> I know a little bit about it, a little bit. Um, okay, then before we get on, I'm supposed to ask this at the end of my sessions, but I don't have any slides at the end of my session, so I do it up front. Um, if you're interested in, in getting more benefit from the Learn WordPress platform, please consider taking the Learn WordPress Learner Survey. Um, Jarwin, I'll answer that question in a second. 
Um, the learner survey is just kind of getting feedback from folks who are using the platform, what they would like to see from it. Uh, it's going to help us define our goals as a team for the next year. So please do consider if you haven't already taken that, taking that. Uh, if you want to code along with me today, uh, please make sure you've got create block theme installed. Uh, you can install that from the dashboard or download it and install it manually. And then as always, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Uh, I will be posting the session to WordPress TV afterwards. I am off tomorrow, so I'll probably only post it next week, around about Monday. Um, and then as always, for more WordPress focused content, please visit learn.wordpress.org. Uh, Yahweh, I'm actually going to answer your question about internationalization in the first bunch of my slides. So I'm going to do that when we get there. So I did see that question. Uh, so as mentioned, my first learning outcome today is what is international, uh, lots of letters. What is internationalization? Um, how interna internationalization works in classic themes. So we're going to look at how uh, theme developers implement it in classic themes. And then we're going to learn how to do it in block themes and why there's a difference. Uh, the objectives today, we're going to create a brand new blank theme and then activate it because I keep forgetting to activate it. And then we're going to create some footer credits in the footer template part. We're going to create the pl proudly powered by bit, um, which I'm sure you've seen in WordPress temp uh, themes all over the place. We're going to change it slightly to, to my, my requirement, and I think Adrian's going to enjoy that one. Um, and then we're going to create a copyright section as well, because copyright is something that's quite common on themes. You have a little copyright footer with a date, the year, the date. Um, and then that's also a common thing that folks do in PHP is they use a function in PHP to make that work. So we're going to show you how, how that works out. Um, and then we're going to enable internationalization for the human readable text. So we're going to look at the basic translation functions. I'm going to share some links with you about where you can find information about these things. We're going to look at the translate and echo functions, the translate and escape functions, and the translate echo and escape functions, or translate escape and echo functions. Um, we're not going to cover all of them. We're going to cover them very broadly. So I do recommend afterwards, if you want to get more in depth into this and understand how this works, to go and read the documentation. The goal today is to understand how to do it in a block theme, if you've never done it in a block theme before, or if you've never done it in a theme before, you, you hopefully will learn how to do that today. Okay, so let's get on to the first question. Uh, what internationalization? No, what is internationalization? I thought I fixed this, but uh, clearly I didn't. Um, <laughs> Catherine pointed this out to me before we started. So, so uh, Yahweh, to answer your question, what is interna internationalization? Let's go to the WordPress developer handbook, which is this first link over here. Uh, and let's go and read what the handbook says about internationalization. Internationalization is the process of developing your application, be it WordPress or be it a plugin or be it a theme, in a way that can be easily translated into other languages. Um, internationalization is often, often abbreviated as I-18N uh, because there are 18 letters between the letters I and N. Uh, and it takes a long time to type out internationalization. Ask somebody who put together slides for this workshop. <laughs> um, it's also a difficult word to say because there's lots of consonants in it and there's lots of T's and N's and L's. And I sometimes stumble over my words. So I'm probably going to say it wrong a few times today. So I do apologize. But the long and the short of it is if you have any human readable text, so in my case, if I'm creating a theme, I am an English speaker. If I'm creating any text that the, that, the, that the visitors will read that is in English, I need to make it possible for folks to be able to translate that. Now, I'm not talking about um, text on the front end of a website. I'm talking about, for example, let's have a look at a theme in the dashboard. So if I open up my WordPress dashboard and I've got 2021, 22, and the new 2023 theme, if I click on theme details on 2022, there is some information here that the user sees. Uh, there is the name of the theme. There is the words by the WordPress team on the right-hand side. There is the enable auto updates text. And then there is a description of the theme. Now, those of you who don't know, WordPress is fully internationalized, meaning all of the, all of the English strings in WordPress, because WordPress is majority, the beginning was predominantly developed by, by English speaking developers. Um, all of those English strings are, are internationalized, meaning they are made available to be translated. And there is an entire team, and I'm going to try and get, uh, this Zoom thing has popped over my screen, so let me try and hide it quickly. Um, no, that's not the one that I want. I want that one. Um, there's an entire team within the WordPress community called poly, polyglots. Uh, and they are the folks who translate specifically WordPress itself, WordPress core. Um, and then they also translate all of the default themes and a whole bunch of plugins. Uh, and if you're somebody who speaks a foreign, uh, sorry, a foreign language, a different language to English, then you can join the team and you can help translate things. 
Um, and if you have a look at the top of this URL here, there's a link to something called translate.wordpress.org. And this is basically the platform that manages all these translations. Um, so you'll see all the languages are listed here. Uh, Afrikaans is the first one. Alphabetically, Afrikaans is a language that exists in South Africa. So it's a language that I do speak. So I could contribute to that. And I think I have in the past. But most of all the languages are, are represented here. Um, and I'm using Dutch as my example today because I know Dutch has 100% translation for both WordPress and the theme that we're going to be looking at. So I can click on, on the Dutch locale and then I can see all the projects within the WordPress project that is translated. Uh, so there is the 6.1 branch, there is the 6.0 branch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the WordPress versions, and then all the way down to the themes and uh, the default themes and, and plug it. So you can click on themes and you can see all the themes. I'm going very quickly here because this is not important to today. And you can see all the plugins. Now, the way this works um, in, in development is there are a predefined set of internationalization functions that developers use when they are making strings translatable. Uh, so let's open that up quickly so we can see what that looks like. Um, and whenever you're developing a piece of user interface that, that requires a label or some text to describe it, it's a good idea to know how to use these functions. So they are grouped. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so it's a little bit bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger. They are grouped by basic functions. So functions that just do basic translations uh, of different types. Then there are translate and escape functions. Um, escaping is something that has to do with making sure your code is secure, which we're not going to cover too in depth today, but we'll dive into it in a second. Uh, so it's things like escaping HTML tags within translatable strings and things like that. Then there are some, some data number translation functions. And then there are also functions that you can do in JavaScript. So if you're right, creating blocks or any kind of JavaScript functionality, there are functions that you can use there. But what does this look like? Um, so how, how do these functions work and how do the teams use them? So I want to show you a very quick example in a theme. I'm going to switch over to my code editor, which is not currently open, which is why I can't switch over to it. And I'm going to open up my WordPress site and I'm going to show you the 2021 theme. So there's 2021. I'm using 2021 because it's a classic theme. It's not yet a block theme. And we're just going to have a look at the footer. Uh, and if we pop into the footer.php file and we have a look from the top and we'll find that the first string that the user might need to translate or see is the secondary menu text over here. Now, this is code that you'll see it's sitting inside the area label attributes of this nav element. But the word is secondary menu. And so that's going to sit in the code. But for some reason, you might want to make that translatable. So you would use one of these translation functions. And the translation functions typically accept the string to be translated and then the text domain of the either plugin or theme. In this case, the text domain of 2021 is the word 2021 or lowercase or one word. Where does that get defined? Well, if you've, if you've ever looked at how a theme is developed, you will know that all themes have the style.css file. And inside the style.css, right at the top, there is always this header. And in the header, there is always, or there should be if it's on, on the on the .org repositories, there is always the text domain label. And that's where the text domain is specified. So the way it works is when you when you define a string to be to be made translatable, you pass in the string and you pass in the text domain. And then all the strings that belong to that text domain are then when you upload it to the theme repository or the plugin repository, are sent through to the polyglots team on that translate WordPress page listed under that text domain, and then folks can come along and translate it. So very quickly, I want to show you kind of what that looks like. So if we have a look at, for example, oh, let's look at Serious Simple Podcasting. Now, this is quite a nice little um, bit of serendipity. I used to work full time on the Serious Simple Podcasting plugin. That was one of my previous positions before I joined Automatic. Um, and so if we click on that, that's a plugin we worked on, and we will see that 19% of it has been translated into, into Dutch. Um, so the, the page is there for the plugin, um, and then you can click on, I think, I'm not quite sure where it is, I think it's uh, clicking on stable, for example, the sub project, and then you can see all the strings that have been made available. So in the code, other developers and myself have made sure that we've used these functions with these English strings, and then members of the Polyglots team can come along and they can include their translation. So if I spoke Dutch and I was part of a team, 
I could click on details here and I could see the word podcast list as the original string. And I could then write in the Dutch version of the word podcast string. And once all the strings are available, anybody who switches their WordPress site to the language Dutch, it'll download the language packs for, all, for WordPress. So then you can download the language packs for the plugins and the themes, and you can see everything in your chosen language. So that's an overview of how all that works. That's not how we're diving into today. That's a whole different conversation that I'm sure you can find topics on WordPress.tv about how that works and how to translate and how to take part in the team. But that's the basic overview of how it works. As developers, we want to make sure that we make our content translate. So we use these functions in our code wherever we're outputting English strings, either in the interface or to the user. Um, when we're developing themes or when we're developing plugins so that it makes it translatable and then the teams can come along and they can translate th those strings for us. One thing to note, this only works if your plugin or theme is uploaded to the wordpress.org repositories. It's one of the benefits of uploading your plugin or theme. It'll get added to translate WordPress and then translators can translate it for you. Um, if you want to ship translatable versions of your strings in a private theme that you might be selling or a private plugin you might be selling, you will need to look at hiring somebody to create those, those different language strings for you. And then there's a special file format that you put it in and you can ship it with your, you know, on your site or whatever the case may be. Um, that's also not something we're going to go, going to go in today. Maybe we can do that in a future session, um, but you just need to be aware of that. that, that that's how that works. Um, cool. I'm going to take a sip of coffee now because I need one because I've said a whole bunch of stuff. If there are any questions around any of that that I've just discussed, uh, please answer, ask them now. Otherwise, we'll dive into the actual how do we do this in our code in a minute or so. Okay, doesn't seem that we have any questions, which is great. If you do have any questions about this afterwards, feel free, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm happy to answer. Um, I haven't done a lot of translating because I'm already English speaking. So it would be ideal for me to translate it to a different language. And my Afrikaans is not that great. Afrikaans is the second language in South Africa that most folks uh, my age did up to standard grade seven and then didn't have to in high school. Now there's other languages, other um, What's the one I'm looking for? Official languages, which I don't speak, unfortunately. So there are teams in South Africa that are working on those languages. But what I have done is organize translation events where folks have translated WordPress. So I do know a little bit about it. Okay. So the one thing that you will note before we continue on is you will note that the, the translation functions, for example, this escape ATTRE, which is a escaping and attributes and then um, echoing it out, or for example, down the bottom here, um, translating the proudly powered by WordPress bit with the with the HTML. Um, they are in PHP. And block themes aren't PHP. They are block markup. So how do we do PHP translation in block themes? Well, those of you who were around a couple of workshops ago, you will remember a concept called theme patterns. Um, and I, I included the workshop in the slides here. So I'm going to just open that up very quickly. So theme patterns were a way that we could include some PHP combination of PHP and block markup or just PHP and insert that code into a block theme. And we use patterns to enable internationalization in our block themes. So I don't expect you to understand how patterns work. We are going to cover them today while we're going through this. But if you want to get a deep dive into how patterns work and how you would do them and how you would use them before trying out internationalization, I recommend watching that workshop again. Uh, but we are going to cover the basics of that today. So we use patterns. We make sure that the code, the block code that we want to make translatable is in a pattern. We include that pattern in our template, and then it is available and ready to get going. Okay. So let's get to doing some coding. <laughs> um, I love this picture of this lady with the code in front of her face because I feel like that sometimes when I'm writing code. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my WordPress site. I'm not going to delete this. I'm going to close this window here. Um, and we're going to start by creating a brand new block theme that we can work with. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you've got the create block theme uh, installed and ready to rock and roll. Uh, currently, it's version 1.3.7. Uh, you can just um, install it from your WordPress dashboard by clicking add new at the top of the plugins page. 
search for create create block theme hit enter it should be the first result that comes up uh, there was a stage where it was the second result for some reason i don't know why and then from here you can click on the install button and then once it's installed you can click active and you should be good to go um, so if you haven't done that and you do still want to follow along please do do that now um, I, but i will slow down in a second if you need to catch up once that's installed it adds the create block theme menu item to your appearance menu and if you click on that that takes you through to the create block theme page um, and from here you can create a blank theme it's the create blank theme option right at the bottom of that or towards the bottom of that page you click on that and it'll ask you for some details about your theme the only thing that you need to enter is the theme name which for my purposes today i'm going to be calling john's translate theme uh, as you can see my my naming conventions are very boring and just to the point <laughs> i'm going to leave out the descriptions and the uris and everything else and just let those go with the default and i'm going to hit generate that's going to create a theme directory for me it's going to create some theme code um, and if i head over to my themes list it will be there uh, there's john's translatable theme and i'm going to activate that theme so that's my blank theme it's now ready if i hop on over to my code editor I will see that John's translatable theme is there um, and it comes pre-installed with a theme.json file, which we're not going to use today, a style.css file, which we are going to use today, um, a readme, which we're not going to use, uh, some templates that we're not going to use, and some template parts, one of which we are going to use today, in this case, the footer template. Uh, so those are the two things that I need to be aware of. Uh, Linda says, boring and to the point is much easier to find in the future. Yes, I agree 100%, Linda. Um, I used to give them random names and then as you say never find things and so i just keep them to the point right is there anybody still needing to catch up with that um if i can just get a couple of slowdowns or readies or, or anything in the chat just to let me know where we are and then we will continue on okay <clears throat> so linda is good to go so we're going to move on from there now, the first thing that I want to do, and I think I mentioned this in my objectives, is I want to change the footer slightly. Currently, if I click on the editor and I navigate to the template parts list by toggling the editor navigation, clicking on template parts, and then clicking on the footer, it'll take me to the footer in the editor. And what's currently there is only the proudly powered by WordPress bit. I want to change that slightly. I want to add the copyright text. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. Uh, I'm going to do it the way I like to do it, but you don't have to do it this way. You can do it your own way. It doesn't matter. You're welcome to follow along. I'll share the code of what I'm ending up with here in the chat once I'm done so that you can just copy and paste it on your side if you want to. But what I like to do is I like to switch. You'll see if you look at the default code that's uh, enabled, if I enable the list view over here, the default code that create block theme generates is a group block and then another group block within that and then the paragraph block for the proudly powered by wordpress i want those two things side by side and further apart um, and to do that we can use the row block so the group block um, nests things one underneath each other whereas the row block allows you to put them side by side so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to click on the second group block and i'm going to click on the little options on the right hand side and i'm going to say insert after and that'll start a new block for me. And then I'm going to hit forward slash on my keyboard because that brings up the, the auto inserter of lists. And I'm going to type row and it selects the first block, which is a row block. And then click on row and it'll add the row block in there for me. So the row block is sitting inside the parent group block. Then I'm going to drag the paragraph that contains the proudly powered by WordPress into the row block. Now, the way I'm, this is working on WordPress 6.1. So if you're working on 6.0, your mileage may vary. But the way it works on 6.1 is I click on the paragraph block and I drag it down and you'll see there's a little, you can't see it now because I've selected the group. So let me just leave it back where it was. Let me unselect the group and let me just select the paragraph. There we go. If I drag it, move it down, you'll see it. it there's a little, I'm pointing to the screen again for those of you who can't see my hand, but there's a, a blue line underneath the roadblock on my screen. That means it's going to put it underneath the roadblock. But I've still got my mask held down. And if I move over to the right, you'll see it suddenly jumps to a little bit of a shorter line. And that indicates it's going to add it inside the roadblock. And then I can let go, and now it's added it inside the roadblock. So if I expand the roadblock there, there's the paragraph inside the roadblock. Okay. The other way that you could do it, I'm going to, I'm going to go back a few steps, is you could click on the paragraph block, 
and you can click on the options and you can say copy block and then you can click on the row block click on the plus icon uh and i think it's just paragraph and then control v to paste and it'll paste that in there. so that's another way you could do it there's multiple ways to get around it. the other option is you could just create a paragraph block and just start the typing in um, but at the end of the day you're going to end up with a group and then a row and then inside the row the paragraph with the parity powered by wordpress uh, is anybody struggling with that does anybody need me to slow down um Yes, I discovered this the other day, Linda, about the how to nest things in. So you move it down and then you move it over to the to the right slightly and it pops it in and nests it correctly. Um, so those are the cool, hopefully those are the cool little things that, that you also learn from these workshops. Um, so if anybody's struggling with that, let me know. What I'm also going to do here is I'm going to remove this, this inside group block because I don't need it anymore. Um, but notice that, I don't know if you can see it on my screen, so I'm going to move this out the way. Notice that if I click on this group block and I scroll to the, the settings on the left-hand side and I scroll down, there is some padding being applied to this group block. There is 80 pixels of padding on the top and 30 pixels of padding on the bottom. So if we remove the group block, we're going to lose that padding. So we're going to remember that for an, in a second. So for now, I'm going to remove that block. Uh, there's, again, multiple ways. I can click on that options button and say remove there. I can use the keyboard shortcut or I can click on that options button and remove there. This is my chosen way of doing it. So I'm going to remove that group. So there it is. And there, the proudly powered by WordPress is on the left-hand side, and you'll see the padding all disappeared. So let's start by adding the padding back. So I'm going to add the padding to the row. So I click on the row. And if the settings are open, I can scroll down. If they aren't open, you can click on the little, let me just hide them quickly. You can click on the little options here and say, show more settings. And then we're going to scroll down to padding. And now the default padding option is kind of hidden. You can't, so when I say hidden, I mean, you're not actually physically setting physical pixels or rims or whatever. There's this sort of block spacing option. And you can just kind of go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go all the way up to five. And that's a background thing. It's implementing some default padding, whatever it is. If we click on the little set custom size, it actually shows that, that what it's doing is it's adding 2.25. So in the theme JSON, 2.25 is set for when you go five along that along that slider. Um, this is perfect for me, who is not a front end developer. I just want to see padding happen. So I just slide it up to five and I'm good to go. Um, so that's what I'm wanting to have here today. Cool. Now that I've got that, now I want to add that copyright footer. Uh, I'm going to stop in a second if you need to catch up, so don't worry. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the row block. And when I do that, to the right-hand side of the row block, a little uh, block inserter button appears. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to select paragraph. And there my block is. And I'm just going to start typing in copy, write, and I'm going to make it 2022 for now. Actually, I'm going to make it 2021. I'll show you why I'm making it 2021 in a second. Um, so there's my copyright. When I hit enter, it creates another paragraph, which I don't want. So I'm going to remove this. Uh, but there are my two paragraph sections. Now I want these spaced out. Um, and there's a cool feature of a row block. So if I select the row block and I click on this justify items button over there, or in the, in the settings under layout justification, I change it to space between items. So the two ways of doing it is either from here, change items, items justification, to space between items or under the layout, sorry, I lost the row, under the layout space between items, and there it moves everything nice and wide for me. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, if there's anybody who still needs to catch up, please let me know in the chat or let me know if you're ready to go. Uh, but that's the basic changes that I want to make today. And then we'll, we'll internationalize those changes um, after coffee. <laughs> This is why I started making these an hour and a half, because it takes me half an hour just to get to the point where I want to start writing code. <laughs> OK, everybody seems to be up. Nobody's telling me to slow down. Linda says just following along now. Linda, do you want us to wait a few minutes so that you can that you can catch up with us, or are you good for me to continue? OK, Linda's good to go, so I think we're ready to rock and roll. OK. Last thing I need to do is I need to get these changes to my theme files. Um, so the two steps that I'm going to do is number one, I'm going to save these changes to the template, which will save it to the database. And then I'm going to use create block theme to export the changes to the files. So I hit save on the on the globe on the editor. It's going to say, do I want to save the footer? Yes, I do. It's going to save that. But as we know, if we have a look at the template parts in the list, there's a little blue dot above it, which says this template has been customized. So those customizations are stored in the database. 
I'm now going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to go to appearance, create block theme, and I'm going to use the overwrite option. And what that does, that takes all any changes that I've made in the database. Um, and I promise you, this is not me plugging create block theme. I just think it's an awesome plugin. Um, and I use, I'm going to be using it for any of my theme development because it makes my life so easy. But I use it, um, I use it in this purpose to basically take all those changes and write it to files because I don't have to copy paste things all over the place and worry about. So I select overwrite and I hit generate. It then writes all those, all those changes to my theme files. So if I open up my theme in my editor and I have a look at my footer there, I can see my changes. The proudly powered by bits is there and the copyright bit that I added 2021 is there. Okay, we're good to go. Um, the one thing that I forgot to do in the editor, which I'm going to do now, is I wanted to change this proudly powered by slightly. And I wanted to make it proudly powered by coffee. Um, so I'm going to change that here in the footer. I'm going to make it proudly powered by coffee. And I'm going to change the link to point to the Wikipedia article on coffee, uh, which is this one over here. You don't have to do this. I just I like doing this for the sake of doing something different. Um, so I'm going to change this URL here. And so this is an example where you might have a theme that you're building uh, that you want to sell. You're not necessarily uploading it to the to the theme directory, um, or you want to. It's for a client, and they want to have a proudly powered by that's custom to them. So that's how you could do it in the template. If I refresh that on the front end, I should now see, if I go back into my editor, I should see my footer now says proudly powered by coffee. There it is at the bottom, excellent. And if I edit it, there it is, proudly powered by coffee. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that footer open because we're gonna be refreshing the editor to see what does or doesn't change as we go along, but that's what I'm working with today. Um, interesting point of fact, I think there's a proudly powered by coffee t-shirt in the WordPress swag store. Uh, which I hope to buy one day. Uh, so if anybody wants an interesting coffee t-shirt, there's one to go. Right. So now we need to start internationalize, internationalizing this, making this translatable ready. So I'm going to start with the copyright 2021 code. But to do that, I first need to ship all of this into a pattern. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shortcut that Adrian pointed us out to us last week in Visual Code Studio. I can select all of this and I can right click on it and I can say format this because it looks terrible the way it was. It looks a lot better now. So now I can see things a lot nicer and a lot easier. And immediately I can see that, first of all, and I discovered this this morning. So this is an interesting little tip. You'll notice that there are actually two group blocks in this template. But we added a group block and a row block. So interesting little tip, a group block is just effectively, sorry, a row block in the editor is actually just a group block in the code. And the difference is, if you have a look at this code on the right over here, uh, the difference is the, the layout options. So the layout is a type flex. Um, I'm not going to get this on screen now. Hang on. I think I need to maximize this. There we go. Um, the layout is of type flex, and then it uses flex wrap, no wrap. So that's the only difference that I've been able to, and then I think the justify content we changed. So that's the only main difference between the row block and the group block on the front end. I just thought that was interesting. Okay. So those things we don't need to worry about. The only things we need to worry about for translation is the copyright text and the proudly powered by part. So this is the whole thing that I'm going to put in my pattern. So everything from the opening paragraph around the proudly powered by and including the paragraph block code and the HTML code for the copyright code. That's what I'm going to stick in my pattern. So the first thing I need to do in my theme is I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it patterns. If you remember from the patterns workshop, that's the name of the folder we need to create. And I'm going to create a new file in my patterns directory or folder, and I'm going to call it credits.php. So that's where we're going to start off with. Then I'm going to grab... Hmm. Sorry, Jonathan, while you're doing that, Adrian Grace had an interesting tip about line wrapping in VS Code. Oh, cool. Option Z, if that's easier. Awesome. Uh, that might be easier, but I tend to want to just do it manually myself. <laughs> I'm weird that way. <laughs> all coders have their own preferences, huh? We all have our weird little things that we do. Yeah. We probably shouldn't, yes. <laughs> uh, but thank you for that tip, Adrian. Um, so then I'm going to copy the block code out. So I'm going to grab everything that I want to internationalize. And it's important to make sure that you copy the block code. In other words, the HTML comments that relate to that block along with. I can't just copy this HTML or this HTML and put it in my pattern. I need to include the block code as well because that makes up the block pattern. So I copy all of that. Actually, in fact, I'm going to cut it because I don't want it there anymore. And I'm just going to pop it over here in my credits. 
Um, and I discovered this recently that uh, reformatting this doesn't make it look very nice. So I'm going to manually do it. I'm going to move the, the nofollow rel to the end of that line. And I'm going to unindent all of this. So it just looks a little bit neater. Uh, there we go. So that's fine like that. I'm happy with that like that. Then for those of you who, who were at the patterns workshop, you will remember that we need to add a header to this pattern. So in the resources of the slides, which I'm sure um, Catherine, who is on the ball, will share in a second, I included the documentation on using patterns somewhere. I just need to move this so I can find it. No, it wasn't on this page. It was on this page. Uh, here we go, advanced topics, theme patterns. Um, and this document is great because it gives some good examples that we can use and some code that we can use. So the two things we're going to use is, first of all, the header. So if we scroll down to the using patterns directory to register the patterns part, there is an example pattern with the example header. We just need the header today because we already have our pattern code. So I'm just going to grab this code out of here. And I'm going to pop it into my temp pattern right at the top. So there we go. So it's opening the PHP tag. It's got the title, the slug, the categories, the block types, and the viewport width. Okay. We don't need the viewport width. We don't need the block types and we don't need the categories because we're going to be manually adding this pattern to a template. We don't want it to show up on the patterns list for users to select. We want to control where it goes. We just need the title and the slug. The title we can just keep very simple and we can make it credits. So there we go. And the slug is always the theme slug, which is typically the directory of the theme, which in our case is the same as the text domain, John's translatable theme. So that's great. And then we give it a, a name and we can call it whatever we want. So for our purposes, I'm going to open up my, my style sheet file and I'm going to grab John translatable theme and pop it in there. And then I'm just going to call it credits. So I'm just going to call it credits like that. Okay. Then the last thing I need to do, and don't worry, I will share this if you need me to share it and we can switch back to it if you're following along. The last thing I need to do is include this pattern in my footer HTML template. So again, I'm going to go back to the documentation and there's an option in the menu on the right-hand side here. If we go scroll the way down, there is a including block patterns in block theme templates uh, section. So I'm gonna click on that. And here is an example, and it's this WP colon pattern syntax. So I'm just gonna copy this one out as an example. And I'm going to pop that into my code. So there we go, where the original strings were that we wanna translate, I'm gonna pop that pattern in. And you'll notice all it requires is the slug of the pattern, which we've already set up, which was John's translatable theme credits. Um, and we'll pop that in there. Okay, so does any, did the wrong thing now, let me just copy that again. And let me paste it there. Okay. Does anybody need me to stop and pause and show anything for a second to catch up? Um, if you if you don't, if you're happy with where we are, give me a ready and we'll move on. Otherwise, we'll hang out here for a couple of seconds and I can show or share code. In fact, I might just share all this code once I've had a sip of coffee. <laughs> so let me do that now. So the footer HTML code looks like this. So if you want to just pop it into your foot HTML, fine, that's great. And the credits.php pattern, in my case, looks like this. And the only change you might need to make is to translate, sorry, is to change your, your, th your, your thug, your slug. Um, now, one thing to also notice, in this case, my theme slug, in other words, the theme directory, and my theme text domain happen to be the same. It is perfectly possible to have those two be different. So for example, if I wanted to make my theme slug uh, have hyphens in between the name. So John's hyphen translatable hyphen theme in the in the theme directory um, in, in, in themes, then my slug in the pattern would be John's hyphen translatable theme. But I could still leave my text domain as one word, John's translatable theme, and then I must make sure I use the text domain when I'm using translation functions. And that sometimes catches folks up because they change one and then don't change the other, but they use it all over the place and they forget that they can be different. Um, Theme slug, what's that in coffee, John? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the theme slug is, is usually just the theme uh, directory name, but in the WordPress theme repository, it's it's the name that they used. It's like the identifier of the theme in, in the repository, in the theme repository. Um, thug slug, yes. I, 
I don't know if it's the coffee that makes me mess up my words or the nervousness of presenting. I never can remember. Um, okay. So now we need to check that this works. <laughs> and the reason why I made this copyright uh, text 2021 is because I want to change it to 2022, refresh the editor, and then I should see the change. And then I know everything is working as expected. So if I make that 2022, hop over to my editor and hit refresh, now I should see this change to 2022. And there it did. So that's good. So that means I know that my pattern is registered. My pattern is being pulled into my template. And the interesting thing is if you if you click on the options of the editor and you switch to the code editor here now, you will see that not the pattern, but the actual template. Um, so it starts over here. Um, sorry, it starts over here. The actual template code has been rendered in PHP and then inserted as is into the footer template. So as the template's being rendered, either in the editor or on the front end, it does all the PHP processing for the pattern and then sends that code to the template and then renders it there. So you don't see the pattern in the editor. So your users don't know you're using patterns, which is great. They just think, oh, you're, you're doing block code and it's amazing and you're, you're a magician. Okay. So let us close the code editor. And now let's start preparing this for translation. So if we go over to copyright 2022, now there's a couple of things I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to go kind of fast, but stop me if, if you're not following on. The first thing I like to do is I like to make the 2022 text so that I never have to change the date ever. <laughs> because there's, there's, there's a joke that goes around on web developer Twitter on the 1st of January every year. Remember to log into your client sites and change the copyright date, okay? And that's because it's a string. It's just a, 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 a hard-coded string and folks have to update it every year. The wonderful thing about if you're using a PHP-based platform like WordPress is you can use PHP code to do it. And the function we're going to use today, I did link through into the second page of resources. You'll notice there are lots of, of uh, resources this week, um, is the date function. So the date function allows you to output string dates. So you can give it any kind of format and you can output a day, month, year, year, month, day, the year, the day, whatever the case may be. It'll take the current timestamp, work out the date based on the format you pass it and then output that string. Um, it's important to note that it returns a formatted date string. Okay, so it's always going to be a string. That'll become important in a second. So I happen to know this. It's not listed in the documentation anywhere, but I happen to know that if you use the following code, so I'm going to open up my PHP tags, which is uh, less than sign question mark PHP, and I say date, which is the function, open close the regular brackets, and in string quotes, either single or double, doesn't matter, I use an uppercase Y. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that folks can see. Um, then And then end the statement with a semicolon and then close the PHP tags. That's going to generate the current year every single time. So on the 1st of January, 2023, it'll change to 2023 and I never have to update this again. So it's perfect to use when you're developing themes that have a copyright uh, footer. So let's test that. Let's see if that still works. So if I switch back over to my editor and I refresh, it should stay on 2022. Um, and it hasn't, and that's important because date returns the string. It doesn't output it onto the screen. So we need to now output it. So in PHP, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. And one of the most common ways is to use the echo statement. Echo and print are two statements you can use in PHP. Uh, print just means print to screen. Those of you who come from C days or, you know, coding uh, in, in Windows and those kind of things, you'll recognize that. Echo is just kind of sort of echo this to the screen, same kind of thing. So I add the echo in front of the date to tell PHP to actually output this to the screen. And I refresh this and it should work. Excellent. So I've got my copyright sorted out, good to go. Because it's a year number, I'm never going to have to translate it. You know, numbers are fairly universal unless, unless you're working with a system that doesn't have numbers, which is possible, but generally fairly, fairly universal. But the, the word copyright, I'm going to want to make translatable. So that's where we're going to start. So the most basic interna interna I'm going to struggle with that word internationalization function is this one right at the top here, which is basically just double underscore. Um, I don't know why they chose double underscore. I would have preferred something like TRL or something. It's whatever the reason they did it. They used double underscore. But you can pass in the string that you want to translate and then the text domain, and then it'll make that string translatable. So we can do this very easily for our copyright. We can now say, right, let's go question mark PHP, um, double underscore. So depending on your keyboard, in, in my keyboard, it's the character just to right of the backspace, but it's the underscore, not the hyphen. And then I open up the 
the brackets to pass in some variables. The first variable I pass in is the string that I want to translate. And because I'm in PHP, I need to put that string in quotes. And then the second one is also a string and it's my text domain, which in my case happens to also be my theme slug. So I'm just going to copy it from here and I'm going to pop it in over there. End the PHP statement, close the PHP tags. I'm good to go. So now copyright is ready to be translated. So when the, the translation functions work for this theme on translate.wordpress.org, copyright will come up as one of the options and folks can translate it. Let's test that my code still works. So if I go back to the editor and I refresh, boom, I've lost the word copyright. Okay, and that's because I'm using a translation function that doesn't echo anything. So I have two options here. The first option, I'm sure you've all figured out already, I can just use the echo statement. That'll also work. Okay, let's test that. There we go, good to go. However, WordPress is nice. WordPress has a couple of um, functions that I can use to both echo and translate. And you'll see the second one on that list is underscore E. And if I click on that, it says displays translated text. So WordPress has this nice shorthand that I can use to echo and translate. So if I go back to my code and take away this and make it one underscore and then E, then it sets it up for translation and echoes it all in one. And I don't know about you folks, but I love things that are shorthand. I love things that work quickly for me. So let's go back to the editor. And there we go. It's working and it's ready to rock and roll. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to leave the code on screen if anybody wants to catch up. I'm going to grab a sip of water this time. And then we'll talk about making this look a little bit better. Hello? Hmm. How you are getting this editor, all this directory, how you are changing the code? This uh, the, I'm using I'm using Visual Codes, Visual Studio Code, uh, VS Code. Can uh, Visual Code? Say again. Uh, what is that code? It's, well, let, me find, let me find. Let me find the yes. link. Are you asking about the editor that I'm using? Yes. 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 Okay. It's called uh, the shorthand for it is VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay. Uh, Catherine has shared the link for it in the chat. It's a free code editor that uh, that Microsoft has put out. Um, and it's what I use for these online workshop sessions. Can you send the link, please? If you look in the chat, can you see the, the chat, the Zoom chat? Yeah. Uh, Catherine's just shared the link there now, right at the bottom. Okay, thank you. Okay, excellent. The, op the open source developer part of me feels a bit weird sharing Microsoft products in, in chats, but anyway, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> um okay i do i do recognize though that it's one of the easiest editors to get into so it is what it is okay so now i want to talk about this code um this code is not pretty okay uh this code has two open close php tags it has an echo here, it has an echo here as well, which means it's echoing twice, which means it's increasing uh, the amount of processing required. It would be ideal if it just did one echo. Um, and so there are functions that you can use to combine all of this information. So we're going to have to take a step back so I can show you another PHP function before we can take a step forward. So bear with me. So the function that I want to show you is actually mentioned in um, the developer handbooks. I'm going to uh, just give me a second here. I'm going to find that. Um, and I'm going to find what I'm looking for. There's a whole section on how to internationalize your theme and how to set things up. And I think it's in there. And this thing is annoying me. I have floating with your there. Um, and you'll see here, there's an example. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and show you folks this. We can share the link in a second. Um, it's not there. Internationalizing your theme. I wonder if it was here. Uh, it's the basics, setting up international JavaScript. I think it's further down. No, it's not there. It's on the guidelines. There it is. I think it's in the guidelines page, which I think I've actually got in my slides. Uh, yes, it's this very top one at the top here. So let's actually grab that out. So it's the first one on the second resources page. Um, and they talk about best practices. So basic strings, 
Uh, that, and then here it talks about using echo or using the shorter version that I showed you. Uh, and then it talks about variables and what to do when you're dealing with variables. Now, in our case, if we have a look at our code, uh, the date part could be put into a variable and then, and then output as part of the string. Um, so here you'll see that it talks about the printf family of functions. So there's printf and sprintf. Now these are specifically PHP functions. So let's hop on over to the um, PHP documentation. And now I've lost the thing that I wanted. Um, um, so the printf function basically outputs a formatted string. And if we have a look at the description, it basically you call the printf function, you pass it a string with a specific format, and then you can pass in multiple variables or values or other strings. Um, and this is perfect for, for using our, um, for doing what we want to do to kind of clean up this code. So let me show you, you, you might remember you saw, we saw it earlier when we looked at how the, the footer text was done in the classic theme. So we're going to kind of do a similar thing here. So let's take a step back. I'm going to just um, comment out this code for a second using HTML comments. It's not going to work because it's got PHP. It, we'll just leave it there for a second. Um, and so I'm going to open up PHP here and I'm going to show you how printf works. So we go print f, and then we're going to pass in a string format. Now, what the format looks like is it's usually the, the human readable language and then a, a series of, of um, string replacement characters. Um, and let me show you where they are. You can, you can dive into how all this works. If you scroll down on this page, there's a whole list of what they call specifiers. So there's a literal percent character, and there's a one that's an integer, and then there's one that's a string. And if you have a look further down here, S is the argument that is treated and represented as a string, and that's what we're going to use today. So what we can do is we can say printf copyright, and then we leave the space because we want that space between copyright and the date, and we use percentage S. And that tells printf that I'm going to be passing you a variable that you need to put into the string where percentage S is, replace it with the string, this variable. And then we can pass the variable in. Now, the variable could just be something as simple as a PHP variable that contains a value that we could have set up higher up. Or we can pass it the result of a function, which in our case here, we can use the date function. Now, what's cool about that is that one line of code is going to output copyright space 2022 without worrying about echoing and all that kind of stuff. So that already shortens all of this for us. So let's test that first, and then we'll look at how we translate it. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to auto format it. Okay, just so we've got some nice, for those of you who don't know, WordPress coding standards have spaces and things in. You, you don't have to follow it, but it's recommended. Uh, and then I'm going to replace, I'm going to actually just take this code out here. And I'm going to pop this into my paragraph. And there we are, good to go. Now that's not translatable yet, but I think you'll agree it's better than having two different echoes all over the place. Okay, so let's test that this works. So if we go back to our editor and we refresh, there it is, copyright 2022. Okay, I'm going to copy this code out if anybody needs this on their side. Um, but that is basically, let me change, I need to change my, I've managed to change my chat settings so that I can't send a message to everyone. I don't know, oh, there we go. I don't use Zoom chat much. Hang on, uh, everyone, that should work. No, that went to Catherine. <laughs> um, don't know how to change it. Okay, Catherine's done for me. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so that works nicely, but now we want to also make sure that we, we make the string that we're passing to sprintf translatable. So the way we can do that is using the same translation function we had earlier. So over here, we can go, uh, using the double underscore method, because we don't want to e echo it at this point, we can pass in this string and then pass in the text domain. So we're using the translation function inside the printf function. And what I like to do to kind of show this is that you can do this in PHP. You can kind of move things onto the next line. So it makes it a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to move that to there. And then I'm going to move the date down a little bit so we can just see it on the screen. 
And then I'm actually going to move the, the printf as well so that we can, there we go, there we go, there we go. Uh, this bracket is around the printf, so that's a bit more obvious where that is. And then I'm going to pop that over there. So that gives us, so the printf takes the string and takes the date and basically puts them together. And then the string we make translatable by using the translation function inside of printf. Now, the question that you might be asking at this point is, okay, Jonathan, but you said earlier that the translators will get the translatable string. And they're going to get copyright space percentage S and go, what is this percentage S? How do I translate it? Maybe somebody asked that. You might not. So the way you can fix that is you can use a PHP comment just above your translation function to let the translators know what these weird variables might be and how they can use it. So let me show you an example of this in the wild. So if we go to, now it's gonna take me a few seconds to get here because I struggled to find it the other day, but if we have a look at, we're still in, in the Dutch language. Um, if we click on over to the themes, and I'm going to show you it's on one of the very last pages, 2023. I couldn't search it the other day for some reason. Let me try and search it now. Uh, oh, wait, hang on. Uh, no. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how this, this works. So I, I, I just did it this way by clicking on themes. And then I went to sort of right at the end. And then I kind of jumped to sort of the middle somewhere to find like all the T's. So just bear with me while I find it. As I say, I don't hang out in the translations area a lot. So there's T for travel, so it'll be TW. There's 2011, so let's try and find 2021. Um, I'll share the link once we find it. There it is, 2021. So let me share this link in the chat if anybody wants to. I can't send messages to the chat anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I'll, co I'll copy it over for you. Okay, thanks, Catherine. Um, mm -hmm. So in this 2021 set of of translations we can actually do a filter here i want to show you this in a second and the filter was i actually searched for percentage s because i know other developers would have used it um, and i did apply filters on that and there's a good example here so the, the 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 string percentage s comment is being used somewhere in the theme um, and if if the translator clicks on it then there's a little comment that is attached to it and the comment is comment count number so that tells the translator, okay, the, the percentage S is the comment count number. So when I when I translate this, I need to make sure that I translate it correctly. And they actually include the percentage S in the translation and then the translated uh, word. So the way you do that in your code is just above the translation function. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see whenever there's translations happening, they like to make the code so that you can do something just above the function. Um, once it's all compiled, above and below doesn't matter, but just before the function. You can open up a PHP comment, which is the slash asterisk, and you can say, I think it's just translators or translators, colon, and then you can say whatever that character is, is the word, oh, sorry, the, the date, the year, the current year. And so what that does is that tells the translator what that replacement is going to be so they know what to, how to work with it. And then you close the comment and then you're good to go. Now, if you remember, we looked at the footer template in a different theme earlier. So let's go and have a look at that. Um, and you'll see here down at the bottom, there's an example of that comment. So for translators, when they're um, translating the proudly powered by WordPress bit, they've said the percentage S is the word WordPress. So when you're translating this, understand the context of what you're translating. And that is how you set up your strings to be translatable. That's not the actual translation itself. Uh, that's a whole, as I said, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But now the string is translatable. It's ready to rock and roll. Um, and we should still see all of this in the front end. Let's test this. So if we go back to the editor and we hit refresh, there we see copyright 2022. So that's good to go. That's still gonna work the way we want it to. But in our code, the word copyright and the, and the specifier will be sent to the translators and say, right, for this theme, for John's translatable theme, this is the string, copyright space and the date. So please translate it for our language. Okay, we're gonna pause there for a second uh, while I grab us up a coffee. If anybody has any questions around any of what we just did, please do shout before we continue. Jonathan, I popped the link to the 2021 Dutch translation. I think that's what you were looking at. If you wanna just double check that. Yeah, let's have a look. 
Uh, yes, that was the one. Yes, hundred okay, percent. Cool. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Awesome. Close out coffee. We can start closing down some things here. I'm trying to figure out how I switch my messages back now because I sent a message to Catherine about something and now I can't get it back and it annoys me. There's a little blue drop down menu that you if if you can click that you should get be able to get back to everyone in meeting. I don't know if something's got borked because of the uh, OS update though. I, it's very possible. It could be because I'm screen sharing as well. So. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't need to share anything else before we. Okay. Continue. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Anybody need me to show the code? Anybody need me to show anything else? Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to is we're going to try and make the, the the rest of the credits translatable, and we're going to cheat outrageously by copying code from somewhere else, like all good developers do. Um, uh, it's, it's the it's the way to learn. But what we'll do is we'll go through all of that code and we'll explain what it's doing, so you understand what's going on. Okay. So now we want to translate this proudly powered by coffee bit. Um, so let's just first do this so that we can just get the code that we need to translate. Um, and what we need to translate contains some HTML. So it's the proudly powered by and then a URL to Wikipedia coffee and, and then the word coffee. Um, so there we will use some different functions. And we're going to switch over to this footer, footer PHP, sorry, footer.php and have a look at what that code is doing. And I'm going to talk you through it. So I'm going to grab that code very quickly. Um, just as it is here, I'll share, I can't share it in the chat. So Catherine, I don't know if you've got a footer.php for 2021 that you could grab the powered by section and just share that with folks. Um, and I'm just going to pop it above this. If you're able to send directly to me. Ah, let me do that. Send I'll send it to, to me you. Be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll send to you. And then if you can please share with folks, thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with my Zoom today. Um, so that's the code that I'm copying out. So let's, let's walk through it and let's understand what it's doing. So as we, as we have just learned, the printf is doing that string replacement, okay? It's replacing the specifier, the string specifier with the word WordPress. Then it's using the escape HTML uh, translation function. So let's go and have a look. I think I've actually got that in the, in the slides. Yes, I do have it there. It is a, it is a translation function. Um, and if we have a look at the description, it says it retrieves the translation of the string text and escapes it for safe use in HTML output. So the reason in a theme, specifically this is a, as an example, the reason you might, so the, the HTML that we're escaping is the, is the anchor tag, uh, the A tag with the href and everything else. Now we are coding this ourselves. So there's very little chance of this code becoming corrupted somehow. But the reason that you would do this is maybe you've set up a filter or an action earlier in your code that allows folks to change this URL. And somebody could change it and inject something which opens up a vulnerability, which you don't want. So that's why it's always a good idea to both escape your HTML before you output it and then translate your strings. So that's where this escape HTML um, function comes in. So it's because we're sending it an, an anchor tag in the, in the variable that's being passed. So that's the, instead of using the standard translation there, we're using escape HTML. Then we're passing in the string to be translated, the proudly powered by bit. We need to change 2021 to our theme. So we'll do that over there. And then it, the second one, this is all effectively, let me move Zoom's video. This is all effectively the same or similar to what we did over here with the date. It's basically a string variable that's going to contain some information that we want to replace with the proudly powered by bit. But you'll notice as well that it's using escape underscore URL. Now this is not a translation function. This is specifically an escaping function because we're passing it a URL. So again, it's keeping this code secure. And then inside of that, then it's actually using another translation function because we want to make the, um, the URL translatable. Now, why might you do that? Well, for those of you who don't know, all the wordpress.org URLs also have what's known as Rosetta sites. So they're language specific sites to that locale. And you can go to NL, for example, talking about the Dutch language, you can go to nl.wordpress.org, and that's a localized version of, of wordpress.org for Dutch folks. So if you're using a URL that you want to make enabled to translatable, then you can translate that as well. So we've got quite a lot going on here. We've got printf doing its thing. We've got HTML being escaped and translated. Then we've got the variable of the actual anchor tag with the link and the text, but then the link is being escaped 
and the linked text is being translated. Uh, so you'll see there's the translation function and it's passing in 2021. So we need to change that as well. Uh, and then it combines it with WordPress over here. And you'll see this here actually relates to that string WordPress there. The string doesn't understand about the anchor tags and all those things. Um, and that's what the, the, the translators will see to, to be translated. So that basically does all of that for us. We need to change our URL so that it's still proudly powered by coffee. Um, and for fun, I actually, thought, while I was putting this together, I thought, I wonder if there's an NL version of this URL, because you'll notice that the Wikipedia one has EN at the front. So I actually thought, let me try. Um, and while the page exists, there's no content yet. So nobody from, from, from the Netherlands has translated this page on Wikipedia into Dutch. <laughs> so if you're Dutch and you want to translate the coffee page, please go ahead. But it does exist as an option. Um, so that was the one thing we need to change. We've already changed the text domain there, so that's good. Uh, this we need to change to coffee, so let's change that. Um, and then we can remove this. And now, the way we know that this is working <laughs> is nothing should change on the front end. When we refresh the editor, we should still see all of the same stuff. Um, so that's what the code looks like. Let's pop on over to the editor and let me refresh that. And we should still see proudly powered by coffee, which we see, which is excellent. And we still see the copy 20, copyright by 2022, which is great. So now it means our footer is fully translatable. Folks can come along and they can translate the proudly powered by bits. They can translate the URL and they can translate the copyright bit. Um, now, there's no easy way to make sure that this is done correctly. Uh, there is a piece of software that you can use. Um, I didn't include it in my slides because it wasn't part of today's session, but it's called PO Edit. Um, and it's basically software that you can use to translate your PHP projects. Um, it does have WordPress support. Uh, it, the free download, there's a manual way that you can create your translatable strings or the pro version has a specifically a PHP option. I'm going to open up PO Edit quickly. Hopefully it's going to work on my, on my desktop um, well, after, you, after the upgrade. While you're doing that, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, while you're doing that, Jonathan, Linda had a good yes. question and maybe mm. you could clarify and just confirm that what I said was correct. Uh, so Linda's okay. asking, you know, will, will you have to do the, all this uh, for every bit of content on the site? And I, maybe you want to make a distinction between uh, what content what you need to do this for and and what what mm. you don't um, so let's let's have a look at my wordpress site as an example that i've got here locally so if i wanted to make my site fully localized translated whatever the case may be then i would have to do this for every piece of content but i might not want to do that so for example my i'm going to go to i'm going to plug my home page quickly my jonathanbossinger.com site for example I don't, I am, I am English. I write in English. So I don't feel the need to translate all the content on my site. Um, and if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to do it using this method. This is only specifically for if I'm developing themes or developing plugins. And when those plugins and themes are being used, there is, in, there is language around the usability of the plugin or theme. So as we said earlier, if I click on themes in the editor and I go to, for example, my, my, uh, in my site now, wrong one. Let me not do that. <laughs> um, if we go to the local site that I was working on uh, and I go to the themes in the editor and I open up John translatable theme, there is some text here that I might want to make translatable so that when somebody installs this theme on their WordPress version and if they're in a different language, it'll show everything in their language. Uh, yes, so the people using it will type in the content in their language, correct. If you want to translate your site and make your site um, available in different languages. There are plugins that enable you to do that. And then you have to literally create. So for every page, you have to create um, the different language version of that. I've actually worked on a project. Uh, it was for a local NGO uh, and they had everything in English and then everything in Afrikaans. And we had to create the Afrikaans pages for every English page that exists. What we're doing today is specifically for the elements around the theme that you're developing for either the WordPress repository or if you want to sell it and you want to make sure that it is translatable, um, mostly if, it's, if you want to install it into, into, the, into the theme repository because the translation things are available there. If you're just building themes for English speaking clients or clients in your home language, so if, you're, if your home language is French or your home language is, is, is Dutch and you're just building themes for Dutch clients or French clients, then make it Dutch or French and then don't worry about the translations. 
But if you're loading it onto the WordPress.org repository, which a lot of folks do, and you want to make it translatable, then include these, this, this functionality. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, cool, so the PO edit that I was mentioning, I think it was running here in a second, so I'm going to try and find it. Um, there it is. So I don't know how this works. I discovered this uh, recently when I did my live stream in preparation for today, but you can create a new translation. Uh, you can browse, browse files, or you can translate a WordPress theme or plugin. Um, and this is the paid version, so you have to have the pro version to do this, so I can't show you how it works, but it basically will scan your theme or plugin folder and then generate the relative files that you need. So if you want to, if it's a plugin or theme that you want to translate yourself, uh, you don't want to wait for folks to translate it, you can use this to do it, uh, and then you can either hire somebody to do the, do the translations or put it out to the community. Um, one day I actually want to try, it's an experiment I want to try one day. There's obviously AI technology now that can do translations. Uh, one day I want to try, this one's using machine translation with deep oh, Google Translate or Microsoft Translate. One day I want to try it myself. I want to take something in English and run it through an AI and see how it works and see if it, if it, if it comes right. But apparently this will, will do all of that for you. Um, I don't know what the pro version costs. Um, let's have a look here quickly. I hate it when they hide prices way down at the bottom it's not even there anyway i don't know what it is but uh, there are apparently other ways to do it which we can maybe do in a future workshop or something but that's one option that you can look at okay um so that is my bit for today does anybody have any questions around all of this that haven't been been asked already um otherwise if not we will we will wrap it up for today linda says the longer it takes to find the price the higher the price is i, I generally find that to be true myself yes <laughs> Okay, I think we've covered everything we need to cover. I don't think anybody has any questions. If you want to see this code live, I very, very quickly, when I was preparing for today, the, the reason I'm a little bit late in my preparation today was that I had to work from home on Monday and Tuesday. So I couldn't do my usual live streams and preps and things like I usually do on a Tuesday. So I did it all yesterday. And then I put everything together this morning. I've actually created, and I don't have the slide in my, in my resources. I apologize. I'll share it with Catherine to share with you all in a second. I created a version of this, exactly what we did today, just in a very simple theme. Um, and it just has the, the, uh, the footer template part, let me find it, um, which includes the pattern. And then it has the pattern, and then it has the credits PHP with, with the code. You'll see the, the formatting is slightly different. Uh, the, the, the theme domain is slightly different because that's the theme of, the, of, the, of this theme, but it gives you the basic idea of how it all works. So if you needed to catch this up, you're welcome to grab this code from here just to see how it all works. Um, once again, thank you all for joining me today. It was lovely to see some, some folks that I've seen before. Um, from next week, we're going to take a break from theme development projects and we're going to be doing some, some block development. Um, I've decided to kind of push myself out of my, out of my comfort zone. We're going to be developing blocks without using React or any of the build tools. So we're going to be using vanilla JavaScript. So no needing to require install Node on your computer and run the build tools. We're going to be doing vanilla, vanilla JavaScript. It is possible. I've never done it before. So I have some prep work to do before we get there. Um, but what I would like to also mention while we're here, I'm going to do a little bit of a plug um, for you folks. On learn.wordpress.org, I recently released part one of my developer's guide to block themes. Uh, part one covers block theme basics, um, building your theme structure in the editor, saving changes to the database and custom templates and template parts. Uh, and for those of you who will remember when I first started doing workshops, we covered all of those. Part two will cover all the stuff we've been doing recently. So things like downloading and using fonts, um, using patterns. Um, what was the other one? I can't remember. Now I'm going to have to check on the issue on GitHub. If you want to follow along, you're more than welcome to. Um, let me just find, I'll share the issue in with Catherine so she can share it in the chat. Um, now I'm not going to find it. You watch. Uh, WordPress looks, filter looks, global styles. Where is that course? There it is, part two. Here we go. Um, so that's going to cover custom fonts, patterns, global styles variations, which did, I think, last week, internationalization, which we did today, and you'll see there I used the Z, and then also locking down your theme, how to use block locking, which we did in a previous workshop. So all of the stuff we've been covering in the workshops is going to be in the course as well. So it's a great resource to use if you forget how any of the stuff works. 
Um, I, if you can, I would love you all to go through the first course and please send me any feedback that you might have, anything that you think is missing from the first four modules, and then go through the second course and send me any feedback there. And then as you encounter problems in your theme development, um, things that we haven't covered in the course, please do let me know because I want to build a follow-up course on all of those things. Um, I am actually going to be, I've got a little side project that I'm working on. I'm going to be building a theme for the like, for the WordPress directory. I have partnered with a designer who's happy for the design to be open sourced. Um, and I'm going to use it to kind of see whether everything that I've been teaching you folks actually makes sense in the real world. Because I haven't built a theme in a long time. So I'm going to be going through that process. I'm going to be documenting that process, probably doing some live streams, probably some workshops. Uh, and then the, the ultimate goal will be an actual theme that you can install uh, and you can see the code and you can see the process. So hopefully if I pick up things, I'll be able to add it to that course as well. But I do highly recommend going through part one if you would like to. Um, part two will probably be um, towards the end of November. Um, and, and then we'll go from there. Linda mentions accessibility. Yes, that is something I definitely do want to look into. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous uh, workshop, I'm not an accessibility expert. I'm usually the guy who takes the design that is already accessible and does what it needs to do. And I just turn it into a WordPress theme. So that's something I definitely want to look into. And we can maybe add that in. Maybe it could even be its own course. And we could talk about all the different things that relate to accessibility. But I'll need to connect with a few experts and get their feedback first. Um, great. Thank you again, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Catherine, for co-hosting with me today. It was lovely to see you all. Next week, bring your code editors, bring your WordPress sites. We're going to be building a plugin. We're going to be writing some JavaScript. Hopefully, I will be prepared. <laughs> um, it's going to be new to me as well, so I will do my best to, to prepare my best. But uh, please do join me for that. We'll probably be doing that for about four to five weeks. Um, Linda, I think the, the, the link is there. But if you just go to learn.wordpress.org, uh, and look at the homepage, it's under courses. It's the first course under courses at the moment. Um, there it is over there. Or just bug, bug me on Twitter and I'll share it with you. Um, great, thank you all for joining. I'm going to stop this now and we will call it a day. Now I can't find, Catherine, can you press stop? Because my things have gone missing. <laughs>